are you? I hope you're doing well. Uh, it is a work day. It's just after the new year. And I just wanted to share some news because it may change what I do this year with this channel. Um, I have to move. <laughs> so I am in the process of looking for a new place. And, um... I, you know, without going into too much detail, it's just a lot of change. I'm going to be downsizing and I'm kind of freaking out about that, about downsizing. I know it's going to be for the best, but yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to keep of what I have. I'm really stressing or freaking out a little bit about the size of my stash and Will it all fit where I move to, wherever that ends up being? Like, will there be enough storage for it? I don't have... It's not huge. Um, it's pretty much confined to a cupboard and one dresser. But obviously, like, crafting is important to me. So I want to make sure I can take it with me. I guess worst case, I rent a storage unit, not just for that, but maybe for extra stuff. But I'm really going to work hard to try to get everything pared down, my clothes, everything. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It changes, and I'm super stressed just about uh, managing all of this. And yeah, it's worrying. It's impacted my crafting a little bit. I have been spending evenings looking for a place instead of crafting. And I understand, like, I always thought to myself when people get really stressed. I mean, everybody has their own ways of managing stress, but I have tended to turn to craft, but to not be crafting anything or moving my projects forward at all is something that I haven't experienced before. And it's, yeah, I get it. I get why people are like, I don't want to work on that. I think I need to work on simple projects, which is fine. It's easy to find simple stockinette or garter stitch projects. So, um, yeah, and I'm desperate to just see some stash get used up, so... Uh, all right, I'll tell you more when I do my full video, which will be in a couple days, so a few days. Hopefully I know more by then. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I hope you are having a good new year. It is January 7th in 2023. This is my Knitter's Life series. Uh, this is the third season and episode one. Um, you can expect in this episode, it won't be quite the same as my normal, uh, as season two. Of course, there'll be some, I hope, like we all are changing for the better or, you know, making, evolving as, as knitters and as people. Um, but I'm probably pretty much gonna, other than this episode, I will pretty much follow this, a similar format to what I did in 2022. Um, where I share a bit of what is happening in my life and I do a whiskey or gin chat and I, um, I'll, lately I've been exploring woolly myths and if you have a woolly myth you would like me to explore, check out the link in the description box down below and you can just fill out a really simple form and pose your question there and I will get into it. Um, there is a bit of a queue right now, but I'm happy to continue collecting questions, um, what your burning questions about woolly myths. We've looked at some interesting things already, um, such as whether you have to soak yarn you've frogged or what, where did Kitchener stitch come from? So yeah, so those have been really fun and I've learned stuff. I hope you've learned stuff as well. Um, before I get too deep into anything, I should do my intro in case you're new here. I think I picked up a handful of new viewers over Vlogmas, so welcome and thank you for checking me out. 
Uh, I deeply appreciate each and every one of you, and uh, I really love talking to you in the comments below or offline um, through Ravelry or Instagram. I have had many viewers reach out to me in both places, and it's totally welcome, and um, yeah, I will do my best to get back to you timely. I am doing a lot of messaging and emailing in my work job, so it's part of my daily flow and I don't find it too taxing at all. But yeah, so welcome. My name is Shannon and I am a university administrator and professor and uh, I don't teach in, I did, I am a former fashion designer and I did originally begin my teaching gig um, teaching in the arts. Um, I have some art background as well as some fashion background. So I did teach a lot of the content in those programs, um, but I ended up ultimately in, with a job in a uh, department that is an interdisciplinary studies that really looks a lot at human interaction and families within the context of, of um, society. So it's not sociology, it's actually called family science and human development, if you've ever heard of that. They're awesome. I love my colleagues. I've been there 20 years this coming February next month. <laughs> so it's just it's something to celebrate for sure. Um, just really, really warm and wonderful people that I work with. And yeah, um, so I primarily teach courses about human interaction, um, some intro to counseling classes uh, at the undergrad level. And um, my favorite lately has been this course on feminism that I've been just really enjoying uh, looking at the literature and there's so much to talk about in that field. Um, but my role in that class is to just teach people about it, just to get their feet wet and let them do their own exploring later on. Um, all of which I do. So I hope that wasn't uh, too big of an intro for you. And there's a lot more info probably than I've shared in a long time here. Um, but it seems appropriate. It's January. You're, you, you might be just coming over and checking me out. And yeah, it's just so you know who I am. I have been knitting since I was a freshman in college. That was when I learned I taught myself from a book. Um, because there were no YouTube or, you know, other ways. There were local knit shops, but I don't think there was one in the town where I went to college. I got my yarn from a farm that was near the school because I went to a rural college in upstate New York. And, um, yeah, it was super cheap yarn. I could make a whole sweater for $20 and it was wool. <laughs> so, but it wasn't really wearable wool. It was pretty rough and scratchy around, but it, you know, it, it scratched the itch that I had of, um, no pun intended, of learning how to knit. And um, I dabbled with knitwear design pretty early on um, just because I was always looking for innovative ways to get the things that I wanted. I'm going to just digress on that track for a little bit longer. I used to get, I would, I had a subscription to Vogue Knitting, the magazine, because it had come back. I was, went to college in the 80s. So it had come back at, into publication, I think in 1981, if I'm not mistaken. It had been in publication and then went out and then came back. And I remember I would get those magazines and look at the yarn and see the prices and it would just be stuff I could not afford. So I became very innovative with my um, ways of knitting. So I would try to knit those patterns using this really rough, rustic farm yarn. <laughs> and that, yes, I had some disasters, but I had some successes too. Um, I think I probably in the last five years or so finally donated the last sweater that I had from those times. But I knit with that yarn for a long, long time because it was so affordable. So even after I moved to New York City and was working in design, um, in a design company, whenever I was up in that area, I would pick up more of it. But yeah, so that's that's basically in a nutshell, that's the very quick and dirty background to my knitting. And I've always just knit um, for the joy of it, for, you know, now it's, um, yeah, it's really a dedicated part of my life um, and my, my daily life. I like to knit a few rows um, in the evenings when I'm watching shows or chatting on the phone with friends or on Zoom calls with colleagues and uh, such. So um, 
yeah, it's been, it's, I just really love it. I love the creative outlet of it. Um, especially project planning. That is the best. I love planning projects and often I'll look at a pile of yarn that I've planned a project for. And I'll just say, I wish I had the Molly Weasley, you know, self knitting, knitting needles <laughs> to just knit it the way I'm imagining it. And I could just come back and go, Oh, this is really nice. I mean, that was what happened in a way in my knit designing life, though it wouldn't come back quickly, we would um, send ideas and swatches off to um, either uh, Brooklyn mills or New Jersey mills or to mills in Hong Kong and or mainland China and we would wait for our samples to come back. So that was, I guess that's the way I operated. But you know, here's the thing with this fashion industry, it's really not compatible with being a parent. <laughs> so it's hard. You work hard, it's great for a single person, or maybe, you know, someone who has a supportive spouse who can help raise the kids. But if you're raising the kids, hard, it's a hard life where academics is much easier for that. I'm just drinking a little water today. It is um, kind of a gloomy day here in northern New Jersey where I work and live and craft. Um, I may have inserted, I think I inserted a clip. Yes, I definitely will. I'm planning to insert this clip unless it's really awful about um, some kind of surprising news that it is time for me to go move. Um, it just kind of, a few things came together. I don't really want to Get into the nitty-gritty of it but um i will be moving this year i am hoping to move to have not to be settled in but to know where i'm going by um within a month like i would say by mid to end feb and perhaps be moved um by the end of april that would be ideal um yeah i mean just a few things came together and it's time for me to look for my own place. I've been a renter for a long, long time and I want to purchase a place and you know, the interest rates and the housing market are not wonderful or in buyer's favor necessarily, but um, yeah, I don't know. It just felt like it was it's time to go and I just really need to get myself together. So um, I was, I had originally thought maybe I would do this in the summer, but it just seems like that, uh, you know, rates could get worse and that scares me. So I want to, I want to take care of it. Well, rates are not as bad and as scary as, you know, they seem. So I've been very distracted with, um, those things and, uh, the pa at least the past week, because I, I had to, you know, I wanted to just get all my ducks in a row, make sure, you know, know my, the price I could afford and know, know my, the area I want to go in and um, I will be swapping out this lovely rural it's not really rural it's suburban but it has a lot it's very wooded this area I live in um, I'll be swapping out this wooded area for a um, more urban setting uh, I'll be moving closer to New York uh, along the Hudson River but still in New Jersey since I work in New Jersey and yeah I'll be closer to New York so I'll be you know I won't I don't anticipate having views of New York from my apartment. That is something you can get, but I just don't want to prioritize that. Um, I'm more interested in just having the easy access to the city, um, like where I can get into New York in like 20 minutes instead of the hour it takes me now. And yeah, I'm hoping to reconnect with some friends I haven't seen in eons um, who live in the city, like pre-pandemic, you know, friends. So, and maybe make new ones. And, you know, get into, you might see more, so you may see more urban scenes um, rather than rural. Although my campus is kind of suburban, so as well, it's pretty suburban, um, very wooded. So I can always have some pretty country uh, looking footage um, for you if you've enjoyed that. And there are deer over there too. I don't know about foxes, raccoons, but anyway, we'll see what happens. I also have... I'm not, I guess I'm, I ha, I find like living here, I feel very isolated because I am so far away from everyone, like my children, my, my, um, I have three adult sons, if you're new here, um, 
I have three adult sons, uh, two of whom are partnered and two, two of whom live in New York City. And so I'll be closer to them. Um, and it'll be more convenient to meet them, uh, to, for me to commute in, like to go in to the city without my car. Like now I can't go hardly without my car. So it'll be easier for me to go in without my car and meet them. Um, you know, for a quick dinner or something, or have them come to me because it'll be really easy for them to get to me too. So yeah, these are all really cool, fun things to look forward to. Um, and as I was saying, I have access to lots of countrified settings. My several friends own homes in the countryside and, uh, yeah, so you'll still see country here. Um, but you'll maybe see a little bit more exciting urban things too. Um, so that is my news. It's I can't say what how it will impact the channel. I assume it will, particularly when I get close to move date, which I'm have, I'm nowhere near move date right now. Um, but I imagine that I just won't have the energy because I barely had the energy to knit this past week. Um, it was just really, really difficult. And it wasn't until today, Saturday, that I've been able to sort of breathe in and breathe out and take some time and um, realize that, uh, you know, things always have a way of working out and sometimes we have to make compromises and that's okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what's happening. Um, I will say I probably will refer to the fact that I'm moving throughout this video and probably the next few episodes as it pertains to my crafting. Um, one of the ways that it will, that moving will impact my crafting besides lack of time is also I'm stressing about I will be downsizing I'm in a kind of wonky space as you can see like I'm in a um an attic so you can see the slanted ceiling behind me I'm in an attic space right now and it's sort of a weird wonky space but there is a lot of square footage and, at the, and in terms of square footage I will be losing some in my new spaces so space or whatever it is so I'm a little concerned about the amount of yarn and fiber that I have and how it will all fit so hopefully I'll be able to figure out a dedicated crafting closet or maybe a half of a closet could be dedicated to um, some crafting supplies and things like that um, so I'm also a sewist I have a sewing machine it reminds me of my younger days when I was moving around in apartments in New York, always hauling my sewing machine. And then there was one day, one move where the machine was broken, I was broke, and I just put it out on the curb and someone took it. Um, I put it out deliberately, hoping someone would take it, and it just got whisked away. Uh, and... Uh, I, I had since gotten another machine, and this machine was my stepmother's. Um, it made me a little sad, but it also kind of relieved me of some of the burden of, you know, that comes along with hauling stuff and moving it frequently. So, yeah. The machine I have now is from the 70s, and it's really cool. It's an old, I think it's a brother's. But anyway, I will tell you about my sewing stuff when sewing happens. I haven't sewed in a while, um, but I do have a few dedicated like supplies I have supplies I have a little supply um, carrier for most of my sewing supplies other than like fabric stash and I have a very small amount of fabric stash yeah but the fiber the fiber is gonna take up so much space but I have a lot of vacuum bags so I may be empty not vacuum bags so I may be smushing stuff down into vacuum bags in order to make more space within the storage that I currently have. Um, generally speaking though, it, I, you know, last year, let's talk about my, let's talk about my knitting last year, how I did, because I like to do a recap. I like to do an assessment of how I'm doing in terms of yarn in, yarn out kind of thing. So I do it by the yardage. Um, how many yards did I make? How many yards did I buy? How many yards did I did I purchase? How many yards did I knit into things or crochet into things? And how many yards did I purchase and spin? My spinning has been very consistent. So I've been tracking um, spinning. I started to learn, I learned how to spin in 2019. That year was kind of uneven. It was the middle of the year that I'd learned and I didn't, I spun 
not a copious amount. But the last, like from 2020 and 2021 and 2022, I have very consistently spun about 10,000 yards. So this year was 2022 was no different. I spun 20, I spent, spun 10,000 yards. I think I spun a little bit more. I have a project that has not, maybe it's like 10,500 um, yards. Uh, I have a project that hasn't been, Ravelry does not consider it complete because I still have one more skein to make. So I, that, if you're a, a viewer who's been here since November, you know what I'm talking about. I had, I had spun two skeins of, um, a colorway from Kim Dye's yarn, which was beautiful. It's beautiful, but it's not shading for me. It'll be shading great for one of my sons who um, do not have blonde hair and blue eyes. My boys are all, my boys are Hispanic. Um, so they are all brown hair, brown eyed, and olive toned skin. So um, the colors will look great on them. Uh, but I might, um, I might try to de-stash some of my hand spinning, or my hand spun. I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll talk about that more at another time. Um, continuing on with my yarn consumption, I, in 2022, I knit 30,000 yards. I began the year thinking it would be a low buy year. I called it a low buy year because I knew I wasn't going to be able to buy nothing. Um, and I wanted to allow myself some indulgent purchases. Like if there was something that I, like a certain project that I wanted to make with a certain yarn that I didn't have in my stash, I wanted to be able to do that. Um, so I did. And I made with that 30,000 yards, I'm going to just look at my book here. I use a bullet journal and I've used the same bullet journal for a few years. I don't, um, keep copious notes, but I do use it for list making, um, so I had knit 17 sweaters. My goal was to knit one a month. I had in intentionally wanted to um, slow down how much knitting I did because I think in 2021 I knit a lot um, because we were still in kind of the pandemic times and it seemed like um, it was something that was, you know, I was just finding that I wasn't doing other things. So I was able to knit more and I, I intentionally slowed down in 2022 because I wanted to get back out in the world and do more um, traveling and seeing people and um, maybe, you know, just chilling on that a little bit. So I made 17 sweaters regardless. So that was pretty good. Um, again, goal being one a month. So that was well, that exceeded my goal. Um, I made 10 pairs of socks. I made three blankets slash throws. I made three sweaters for my granddaughter, Julie. I have a, one granddaughter, one grandchild. She is two and she is lovely. Um, when I make things for her, I pop pictures on screen of her. So you will definitely see her. She is adorable. Um, I made a toy for my granddaughter. I also made one pair of socks for her. I made a few crochet items that were stash busters. Like I was trying to use up scraps. So I made these scrappy crochet baskets and stuff and you can if you're interested in seeing what um some of the things I thought I would share with you some of the sweaters that I made last year um some of the highlights some of my favorites I'm inclu I'm including this right here this is the saucy surrey bomber jacket and it's a pattern that I made and um that I developed and uh yeah so I did uh two lace and stripe boxies I did um which I love and wear the heck out of I made several daily pullovers bless you for sticking with me and watching me make daily pullover after daily pullover I think I ended up making three I made a uh I made one out of the linen quill that's daily pullover by um Pearl Soho I made one out of superwash and I made one out of linen I did have a fourth one planned that I never ended up making um, but I may make it this year. I um, also made the Perennial by Nora Gone. I loved, I love that sweater. I wish it was a little longer. I may go back. I have a little bit of yarn left. I may go back and extend it. I also made the Don't Look Up sweater that Jennifer Lawrence wore um, in the movie Don't Look Up. And it was a brown sweater with some pink and gray um, color work up here. And in the sleeve, it was really cool. I really, really loved that. 
I was pretty effective with my advents that I got. I got advents last year. I got them this year. I got them the year before too. I still have some of those advents hanging around, but last year's advents pretty much got knit up. One of them was knit into um, a throw. One was knit into a sweater and one was completely, I used them all up. Um, and the last one is still a whip. <laughs> It's uh, the Olan 2021 um, advent, but I got it out. I'm not going to show it to you now because I didn't do anything with it, but I hope to be working on it in the coming uh, weeks because I want to finish it. Um, yeah, so that, so, so I spun 10K, I uh, knit 30K, and I purchased 20 or 13k of yarn, including my advents, which advents can be pretty, pretty massive uh, hits to your stash. So the Grinui um, advent that I got, and I'll put video overlay video here of it, of the entire thing, uh, it is 2,000 yards. So it's some pretty, pretty substantial. Um, I also got a 12-day mini skein from Sakami, the Corydale sock. So it's rustic and, and uh, naturally dyed. It's really beautiful. I'll overlay that video of that too. Um, and other than that, I was pretty intentional in my buying. I bought things that I... I bought things for specific projects. So I bought the yarn and cast them on. Um, with very few exceptions, I did purchase 10 skeins of Spin Cycle um, dyed in the wool in their mystery bag uh, sale. So that was like a fire sale. It was really good, um, a really good bargain. So that all went into stash, although I do have a couple projects in mind. Um, I also purchased some black, natural black uh, wool from uh, Wooly Mammoth company and that went into stash and all of my hand spun pretty much went into stash. I did not make anything specific with any of it although uh, one I made many sweater quantities <laughs> with that hand spun. Um, one of them will become uh, the Weekender by Andrea Mowry because uh, she's doing a spin it to knit it year long knit along and that was one thing that I am planning to make this year. Um, so pretty much everything else I have cast right on into sweaters uh, or projects, right into projects. Um, I am looking or considering what to do with the mini skeins that I got. Um, I also got some fiber advents and I got fiber and yarn. Did I get yarn? Yes, I'm going to show you the yarn. I'm not going to show you the fiber. Um, one of my family members gave me 30, a 32 ounce bag of fiber and they, cause they were worried. Um, they wanted to make sure I had enough to make something and friends that is three sweaters quantities. <laughs> so I have this, it's a beautiful shade of blue with sparkle. Um, maybe I'll put a picture here to show you it, but yeah, it's a lot and it's a little overwhelming and I only wished that I knew I was moving before Christmas because then I would have been asking for things like a coffee pot or um, spatulas <laughs> instead of, uh, I didn't ask for fiber. It was just something that this person thought I would like. Um, and I, I do, I do like it, but I, I'm just stressing now about what to do with the, you know, all of it, all of it. Um, because of the move, even though I don't know where I'm going yet. Told you I'd be sprinkling it in. Yeah, so that means overall my whole, my stash is down by 7K, 7,000 yards. So that's pretty good. That's seven sweater quantities for me if it's fingering weight. So I'm pretty pleased about that. Um, and this year, I would have told you I was doing another low by year. Wait, I'm going to put my computer down because um, I'm done looking at it and talking about stuff that I made. <laughs> yeah, I would have told you that this year was going to be another low by year, but it may end up being a no by year just because of my situation. Um, I mean, I am going to Vogue Knitting Live, and I imagine I'll buy some souvenir yarn um 
so to speak, or maybe some yarn that really, really grabs my attention. But uh, I'm other than that, I am in stress mode and all I want to do is knit all the yarn or sell all the yarn <laughs> and get it all out of here. Um, so yeah, let me talk to you about, um, I'm going to kind of book into this, this like 2022 recap with what I finished in the last part of 2022. And then I'll do the last segment will be, um, my knitting plans so far. Um, yeah, so let me talk to you about recent finished objects. I made a stocking cap for my granddaughter, Julie, uh, Julie, yes. Um, and I will get a picture of her wearing it, I hope, next weekend. I'll see them then. Um, I used the Churchill, oh my gosh, is it Churchill Yarn and Tea in uh, Washington State? I used their pattern. It's free on Ravelry. Um, many, many sizes. I did end up knitting the entire thing and then ripping it back out again because it was too big. Um, I didn't check gauge, um, bad me, but I, I used, this is some hand spun actually. This, it didn't use much. It used maybe 150 yards in her size. Again, she's two year old, so I think this gives her some growing room. So I'm excited to gift her that. Um, and yeah, I still have a significant amount of that hand spun left. Uh, it was pretty chunky. I would say it's probably Aaron weight. Um, I completed socks for myself for New Year's and I used the DK everyday, no, I used the DRK bear paw pattern, um, which is her DRK everyday sock pattern geared for DK weight yarn. Um, I've used this pattern. I, if you've been here, if you were here all last year or, at all, or if you stopped by last year, you would have maybe checked out the fact or noted that I knit a bunch of socks um, using the DRK everyday sock pattern in DK weight. I did my own modifications to figure out sizes. I made socks for each one of my children, my three sons and their partners. So I made a total of five pairs of socks over the course of the year um, for them. Um, I like my mods better than I like uh, this one. And I'll tell you the difference. The main difference, I mean, I use this beautiful self-striping yarn by Mustache Yarns, and I didn't bother with the afterthought heel. I just knit, 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 and I think it looks totally fine, especially on the foot. You don't even notice those really, those narrower stripes. They don't bother me at all. Uh, and I'm going to do another pair because I have another skein of um, another set of self-striping yarn. And... I have plenty uh, left over of that particular color for Julie to make a pair for Julie, so I'll be doing that in the next um, couple weeks. Uh, this was, here's the label. This was uh, Mustache Yarn 7525 Merino Nylon, uh, DK weight, and they come in um, two evenly divided 50 gram, 50 gram, 100 gram, 125 grams, so two evenly divided balls um, that stripe identically and I didn't have any trouble with that part that part worked beautifully what I didn't like was the needle size so the bear paw sock has you use a four millimeter sorry not four millimeters US size four 3.5 millimeter the engine the re-engineered DK weight Andrea Maury everyday sock pattern that I made I developed using her pattern um, I use a 2.5 or I think that is that a, is that a 30? Yes, a three millimeter. So a three millimeter versus a three and a half. And I think it makes a world of difference. I really like that better. So the next pair of self-striping socks that I'm going to make for myself, I will be using my own pattern and seeing what happens. Um, these feel a little loosey goosey on my feet, even though I'm pretty sure I know I made the right size. Oh, by the way, I've also worn them. So they have a little bit of fuzziness on the bottom because I made, I like to have brand new socks for New Year's Day. That's what I made these for. Um, so I finished them on New Year's Eve, I think, and uh, yeah, just went with that. I haven't even blocked them, so maybe I will block them and see if that changes anything. I don't really think it will. I don't really think you need to block socks, but anyway. Um, yeah, so that was kind of a bummer. Uh, the You know, I don't like the way those looser stitches feel. I think the tighter, snugger, 3 millimeter um, needles really work better for me. 
Um, I do have kind of sketchy notes if you are interested in maybe trying your own, maybe, you know, I have the cast on amounts. So you could try to do a side by side, like maybe the bear paw, look, maybe you knit a couple sizes bigger than what you would wear, or a size or two bigger than what you would wear and use a three millimeter if you're interested. Like maybe you've tried the bear paw sock and you also don't like kind of the way that looser knit feels on your foot. Um, so yeah, that's my suggestion there. Um, last, Martha is wearing, Martha is my mannequin, she is my size. Martha is wearing the Saucy Story Bomber Jacket that I have made for a, as a birthday gift for my grand, for my daughter-in-law. Um, yeah, so it, it, you know, the, this, I finished this pattern on the heels of getting the bad news about having to move, and, um, yeah, I was a little stressed out, so I do need to do a little bit better job with the um, finishing of the zipper, the neck to zipper um, up in the uh, collar area. But generally speaking, this is, you know, this is just a, a drop shoulder bomber jacket style with ribbing um, on the bottom. It is a paid for pattern that um, I released in the beginning of the pandemic. I think it was March 20. Um, and yeah, I did not, you can see the pooling of the yarn. I did not alternate skeins. I hate alternating skeins. So I really, really try not to do that. Um, I did do some alternating. Um, yeah, just because like the, you can probably see it here, the sleeve that when I got to the last skein, um, it was quite different. It didn't have as much red. So I did a little alternating through here until I ran out. Um, of the of the yarn. The other sleeve looks fairly identical. I did this a very similar very similar thing with that. Um, but I think it's fine. It, it all works. Uh, the yarn is um, Ching Fiber uh, Melted Baby Surrey. It's old stash that I've had for a couple years. I was delighted to use it up. I actually bought it with this intention of making a sweater for um, my daughter-in-law and I just never did it never did it the colorway is called black hair um, her Surrey her Surrey base is a DK um, weight so and it's like a DK for me this is knit on size 5 needles um, it's not my best zipper setting job I um, could have done better I don't really like this dip in the front but um, I and I tried to kind of rework I mean, I felt like in blocking it would come out, but it really didn't. I probably could do a better job blocking it, but I actually think on the body it looks fine. Um, and if, if you wore it open, no one would be the, the wiser. Um, it has a separating zipper, as you see. You sew the zipper in by hand, um, and uh, I think what the mistake I made on this one, I was trying to make this a little bit longer then the pattern is written for so I bought a longer zipper and I think that's why like I ended up just stretching the front a little bit more than I should have I should have just cut the zipper um, because the zippers zippers come in two inch increments so it's two four six eight ten twelve and the pattern calls for a um, 18 inch zipper and I bought a 20 inch and yeah anyway I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's done. Um, my waist cuff collar and uh, waistband are made out of this um, fingering weight sock yarn from Frost, Frost Yarns. It's called Reverse Black Speckle, but it's just black with a little bit of neon pops in it. And I think it works really well with the this black yarn that also has neon pops. Um, so yeah, really, really pleased with it. Overall, a little disappointed with my handling of the zipper. I ended up like actually st stitching in a zipper. The zipper was broken. I didn't realize it, so I had to get another one. <laughs> and so I ripped it all out, and then, oh, it was awful. Awful. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little uh, hesitant to fiddle around with it anymore. But I will, I will just, I can adjust the top. I've got some straight pins in there um, just showing me where to stitch down. So, um, yeah. Should be fine. Should work fine. <sighs> anyway, okay. Is that all my finished objects? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you saw any other finished objects you've seen, you saw in my last um, 
Vlogmas or in Vlogmas. Like as I finish things, I think I talked about them. Um, but yeah, that is. Let me talk about whips. Um, apologies if you're bored with this project. I am certainly ready for it to be done. Uh, I am still working on the Funfetti by Sylvia Watts Cherry. I I love this. I love the way it looks. It's so cool looking. It has um, my, it's a four color sweater that you do this like slip stitch pattern, but it ends up looking like herringbone. It's super cool. Um, it is knit. I think the pattern's written for pieces. Um, and I knit it in the round because I, you know, seeming why I'm going to seem less than I, than I have to. Um, so yeah, I just knit it in the round, but you do knit bottom up and then you do the sleeves bottom up as well. Um, I am so close to having my second sleeve done. I have finished one. Um, and I am this far with the second one, which is actually pretty close. I'm going to finish this, this sleeve tonight. I don't know that I'll finish the sweater tonight because I still need to, there you can see, because doing the cap, I was able to do the cap pretty quickly because it's just, you know, so I knit in the round and then I'll knit flat, um, back and forth for the, for the sleeve cap. And you can see like, there's no difference. I think because I've been knitting such a long time, there's really no difference in the gauge from knitting flat and knitting back and forth. Also, I'm an English knitter, and I think English knitters are a little more consistent when it comes to the purl side. That's just what I've observed. I don't have any data. That might be a myth to look at. We could look at that maybe. I don't know. I'll save it for when I don't have anybody giving me a myth. Um, this yarn is scrumptious and beautiful. I love it so much. Um, it is really comfy and I cannot wait to wear this sweater. I um, purchased, this This is very expensive. This might be among, it's definitely among, it's definitely in the top five. It may be the number one most expensive sweater I've ever made because um, <laughs> it was pretty expensive. But here's the thing, like because I was doing a low by year, I had you know, I had more money because I wasn't buying as frequently. I had more money to, you know, spend on one sweater's quantity. Um, I purchased the Lamb and the Kid Todd base, which is a DK weight base, and it is 65% uh, yak, 35% cashmere, 150 yards per 50 grams. Um, and you can see the price. It was $34 a skein. You can do the math. Um, I actually bought some of it on sale. She does uh, what she calls monthly matinees. And um, what that means is that every, um, every month she has a set of, of colors that are on sale. So a lot of them I got on sale. The gold I paid full price for, but the orange the brown and the blue I got at uh, $27 a skein. So it was, you know, I saved a little bit. Um, the orange is the colorway Kaftan. The brown is the colorway Chili, which it's really a reddish brown, but it looks brown brown in this um, uh, color arrangement. The gold is Anorak and the blue is the colorway K, C-A-Y. Um, I bought three skeins of each color. I didn't, I was planning to do knit the orange and I spent a lot of time angsting about colors and I did that like from uh, towards the end of summer, like August until I figured it out like in October or so when I got all the yarn and cast this on. Um, but I went back and forth trying to figure out my color arrangement um, knowing I wanted to use a 70s inspired pastel, like our palette, 70s inspired palette, which I think I achieved. But yeah, so I have, I actually have three skeins of the orange and I'm kind of glad I do because I still have to knit the neckline and this is all I have left. This is not a lot. Uh, so I'm glad I have a second skein because the, the pattern calls for just one skein for the neck um one skein of dk weight which i think the yardage that they used was a little bit higher just a tad higher 
Um, the rest of the skeins, so I'm almost done with the sleeves and this is the tail end of the second skeins. Um, weirdly, the gold that I bought from Lamb and the Kid, this one, this is the third skein. So you can see how much, let me show you a full skein, how much I, how much more gold. So the, weirdly, the gold, um, here's a full skein. The gold weighed less. So these were 50 grams or 51, you know, they're usually all a little more, but this gold skein, these gold, the three gold skeins I got were only 46 or 47 grams. So of course there was less yardage. So that was a bit of a bummer. Um, I really worried about maybe not having enough, but I can see now I'll have plenty to finish. Um, but whereas I will have um, a near full skein of the blue and brown left, I will have a nearly gone third skein of um, the gold. So it's kind of strange. I found that weird. I could reach out to Sarah from uh, Lamb and Kid and let her know, but you know, I don't know. I have other things I'm worried about right now than um, just saying, hey, you know, your yarns were not full skeins. Um, the other thing about this yarn, just to kind of grouse a little bit more, there were frequent knots. Um, not, I shouldn't say frequent, but there was like a knot here and there as I was knitting, which I know can happen with these finer fibers. It's like Zach, or Yak and, uh, Zach, <laughs> Yak and Cashmere, that can often happen, um, with them because they're just more delicate. So there were knots on occasion. I probably, I mean, maybe out of all the skeins, I cut like four knots. Um, and what I did when I would get to a knot, I would just cut it and then just as if I was adding a new skein, um, just because I didn't want it, a little stubby knot in the middle of my knitting. Um, but yeah, uh, curious to know how the sleeve is gonna fit in the armhole following the pattern I'm getting the specs and everything that she talked about so yeah it should be okay it sure seems like a big armhole for the uh sleeve there but we'll see um it's supposed to be kind of a sweatshirt fit not drop shoulder per se but kind of a um a broad cap like a broad based cap not a high cap which would be very fitted so it's not a broader flatter cap means it's a um not as snug of an armhole not as fitted so um yeah it, i think it's just going to be kind of a luxurious um a luxurious sweatshirt style i'm ready for it to be done though i've been working on this since october and it really sat um it's not its fault it's not you know it's not wasn't the knitting i do i would do want to say like i find the knitting with three three colors very fiddly and so that sometimes created some resistance in me from um you know working on it uh but uh yeah anyway um the book is from lana magazine i mean the book the book the pattern is from Lana Magazine from her, from their Summer 22 um, uh, issue. And I'll show you a picture from the magazine. This is what it looked like. It's really cute. Um, but yeah, if you don't mind carrying strands of yarn for a long time, you, uh, you, you, yeah. You might enjoy this. You would probably enjoy this. I just want to show you too. I showed this before and talked about it in depth. But this was me playing around with all the different colorways, um, all the colorway possibilities. <laughs> uh, that was fun. Um, yeah, but I am ready. I'm ready for this to be done. And if I weren't shopping for a, a home, a new home, I'd finish it tomorrow. <laughs> and you would see it next time. Um, but anyway. I think that's all I can say about that. Uh, other whips are, um, let me stick with ones you know. This is, I haven't done much with this. This is, I am knitting the Ward sweater by um, Sloan Rosenthal. She is the brains behind Hudson and Forge Yarn Company. 
and uh, uh, yeah, I I'm more so I purchased this beautiful green yarn from Lobby and Ame. It is the Wensleydale Worsted in the colorway Lush. It does not look nearly as bright on screen as it actually is, but I'll try to tweak that in. I don't know if I'll be able to because I have a lot of other bright colors, but if I can, I will try to get, maybe I'll put a picture of the yarn. Um, but yeah, so I bought a sweaters quantity and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And I looked, I looked for patterns. Um, and found, stumbled upon this one. I really, really love it. Um, I'm already putting it away without showing you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, again, bottom up. This is a, um, here, let's see if I, that lets you see it. It's a sweater that has a cab, has cables on either side of a garter, you can see here, garter panel. That's the garter panel goes in the front with cables on either side. And then there's this beautiful textured knit that goes along the sides and will also be on the sleeves. I can't remember if there's a cable on the sleeve. I don't think so. Um, but it's a really slouchy style. It's exactly the style I was looking for. And uh, yeah, I look forward to getting back into this a little bit. I Yeah, it's been sitting here and not being loved at all because I was so consumed with knitting Christmas knits. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll get back into that. Um, it will be of concentration. I think I'm kind of waiting. I want to get through with the Funfetti. Not that it's concentration, the Funfetti, but I do have to change yarns every couple rows. So um, that that contributes to the thought, the thinking about the project. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll, I'll get back into that. It'll, it's good to, I really like to work on something that's more concentration knitting in the mornings when I first wake up because it just helps my brain wake up and get going. <sighs> Almost done. I am also working on a sweater, I mean a hat, another hat for Julie, because she has outgrown all the hats that I made her previously. Um, this is the Monta Montana hat? Montana hat. Yeah. This is the Montana hat. I can't remember who designed it. Um, but you would have seen, if you know Caddy Jack's knits, you would have seen it there. She's made a ton of them. Um, and I had this single skein of a uh, beautiful rainbow worsted weight yarn that I thought would be um, amazing for this pattern. And it should be just enough to make Julie um, the pattern. It is a one by one rib knit, so it will um, expand if it looks a little smaller than the stockinette hat. Um, that is why. Uh, and the yarn, the rainbow, this beautiful rainbow yarn, I bought at Rhinebeck in 2021. Um, I didn't go to Ryan back in 2022 because it is coincides with my granddaughter's birthday. I really wish they would change the date of Ryan back and put it on Columbus Day weekend like it used to be. <laughs> um, anyway, it is this is uh, Montdale, Montadale yarn by Solitude Wool, and it was their Rhinebeck color of the year called Rainbow. I actually think they make it. Rainbow, they've made Rainbow for several years. I believe they also sold Rainbow um, for 2022. Um, but yeah, so it's a worsted weight. It is 100% uh, Montadale, which is a, I believe it's a cross breed up between Romadale Rom and um, Mont something, Sheeps. <laughs> um, and it's a woolen sponge, so it should be nice and cozy as a hat. And that hat you can triple has a triple brim, so you can or you can triple fold it over your ears. So it should be really cozy, and I hope that it will um, grow enough that um, she'll be able to to wear it. Uh, I am now going to move into some stash that I got, which will branch off into my um, plans, my upcoming knitting plans. You might remember that I talked about, if you've been here a little bit, or if you're new, I'll recap, don't worry. I talked a little bit about my ideas of a design for Vogue Knitting Live. Um, Vogue Knitting Live is February 10th and 11th, somewhere around there, early Feb. 
And uh, I bought tickets already to go. I made plans with a friend and I've, I'm letting you all know I'll be there. So if you're going to be there too, please come up and say hi. Um, and my, I had this dream of making a particular sweater. Um, and it was all inspired by my, as well as the, the ward by Sloan Rosenthal. That was all inspired by some recent runway shows that I had seen with sweaters. Um, and I put those ideas together on a Pinterest board that is open for you to see if you're curious. Um, you may look at it. You might, I've restricted it so you can't edit it, but you can check, check it out. And I think you can take the images and put them on your own board if you want. Um, it's very bright palette. It doesn't mean that that's all I saw. That was these. Were, I was looking for a theme, um, or I was like noticing a theme that I happened to really like and found inspiring. Um, cause a couple people messaged me afterwards and said, "I love neutrals. I guess I should, you know, wear a lot of them now because they're going to be out." But that's not necessarily true. There's usually multiple threads of fashion cycles or fat, fat things that are you know, hot and happening or new or interesting. There's usually several, several threads that you can follow and neutrals are always in. So don't worry about that. If you're not into brights, don't worry about it. You probably won't like this board if you're not into brights, but you may find some interesting silhouettes and things to look at. Anyway, I, um, I got the yarn and I have prepared a swatch. So I'm going to show you the swatch and I will talk about the yarn. Um, I am going to make a very bright sweater. This is my idea. Um, I want to do a uh, sort of a slouchy v-neck with some stripes and color blocking. Um, and I'm going to make it the body. The main color is going to be this very bright pink. It is this here, it's Fua Fua by Moondrake Yarn Company. Um, it is called Electric Berry. Fua Fua is, I believe it's a cashmere. Sorry, there's going to be some crinkling. This is my entire palette. Is cashmere? No, 75 brushed cashmere, 30%, 70 brushed cashmere, 30% superwash merino. Um, yeah, by Moondrake. And you get, I think, I think you get around 300 yards. Yeah, 315 yards, 50 gram skeins. She calls it a fingering weight. I'm holding two strands together to get this, this um, quality. So I bought enough yarn with that in mind. This is a single strand. I just didn't like the transparency of this single strand. Um, so I decided to go with the double. And um, I will be striping in this mid-tone pink and this pale pink. So this is Rose Quartz. I don't remember the name of this one. Electric Lilac. So you can see like there's a tonality with these. They're all kind of tonally the same. So my, my process is three tonally the same. You could have, I could have picked any one of these to be the main color. I just really wanted the really bright one. And then look across the, the color wheel and pick a color over there. So I ended up picking this lichen colorway, this sort of swampy, mossy green color um, for my high contrast. So I wanted the idea is that there's a very high contrast. And I have not made sketches of this yet, I don't think. I think it was just all in my head. Um, and I don't think these two colors land next to each other. Um, I think this will actually land next to the pale color. Um, but again, it's primarily going to be this. The idea is that you're looking directly across. Do I have my color wheel handy? I do. Here it is. Um, so you're looking directly across from, here's uh, that electric lilac lands here in the red violet, and I'm going directly across, and here are those swampy greens. So that's how, that's how that worked. Um, 
So yeah, I'm excited to get this going. It will be pretty mindless and I am knitting on US size seven needles, which is um, my for my milligram folks out there, uh, that is a 4.5 millimeter. So it should go pretty fast and it should be pretty nice. So I don't have much time, I have a month. Um, I jump my, I mean, ideally I would get the pattern published too uh, by the time I go, because usually what happens at Vogue is people stop you and talk, ask you about your sweater, just like they do at Rhinebeck. Um, only probably more so because it's smaller. It's a smaller, more, con more dense area and people are more densely packed at Vogue. Um, so I hope to get through the pattern quickly enough to get it to a tech editor and get it out there. If you love this <laughs> concept and want to preview the pattern, um, I'm happy to give you the pattern, gift you the pattern for you to do a preview knit. Um, it, I'm not gonna call it a test knit because I don't think this calls for test knitting. This is pretty simple, straightforward. It just needs some tech editing. Um, and I have been right, the pattern, pattern is almost written. Um, I, I tend to write my patterns first and then knit and modify as I need to. Um, and for me, I'm always in the middle of the range. So that's a good place to be when you're looking at grading both smaller and larger than your, than, than the sample size. So essentially this will be the sample size. Um, I did do, the pattern is mostly graded as well. There's, there's a section from like, here to here, <laughs> here, like here to the armhole that I'm uncertain about. So I need to get it on my needles and work through that and see. Um, I know where I need to be here and on the sleeves, but, and I know where I am as I'm developing the V coming top down. Um, but I don't, haven't quite worked out the rapidness of the increases to get from the number that's here to the number that's here. So I have about a three or four inch section that I just need to put those numbers down and figure them out. So I think it's better to just get it on the needles and go. So yeah, I'm excited about that. It's going to be a nice distraction from all the other things going on in my life. Um, and last I did, uh, make a brief list so if you if you were here last year when i did my list last year i listed each and everything that i was interested in making think knowing that i wasn't going to make all of them and this year my list is much smaller um my project list for 2023 is right there i have a list at the top of whips to complete um the ward the funfetti a the olan shanklet Advent 2021. Sorry, it's not quite focusing. And I have a shawl that's been in my whip pile. I don't, I don't have a huge whip pile. That's basically it. Those two <laughs> things. The uh, Long Island Yarn and Farm shawl and the Olana. And there's a, two designs that I have not finished um, or written the patterns for. Um, that I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. The one is a sock and I'm probably going to finish that sometime this year. Um, but the other one is a shawl. I don't know if I'm ever going to finish it. So I may just frog that yarn. Um, yeah, so that's, those are the whips that I intend to finish this year. You should know that the Long Island Yarn and Farm shawl was on my whip list last year and I never got around to it. So I hope I get around to it this year. Maybe moving will help me kind of, as I rearrange stuff, I might either find inspiration to finish the yarn, the project or frog it and use the re repurposing yarn for something else, which is also really deeply satisfying. <laughs> um, my new possibilities, there's a handful of things on the list that I am interested in making. I have at the top some old stash, my oldest stash actually, earmarked for the Stockholm V-neck vest. And I have the Fosenbein, but I don't have yarn. Um, figured out for that yet. I want to make another rainbow hoodie for Julie. I made one last year and it's too small. So I have enough yarn to make her a bigger one. So I told her I would make her another one. And that's from Old Hand Spun. And then I want to make the Nambi slipover, which is, um, that will be out of Hand Spun. The, my VH, V, 
VK, I'm going to just read these to you, VKL sweater, which I just talked about. I also really want to make a black and white graphic project, either a shawl. I thought about making the Mare, Mare shawl, but I'd be interested in maybe doing a black and white graphic sweater. And there's a couple I've, I have in my queue that I'm on Ravelry that I may do. I'm interested in the Little Wave by uh, using some Olan DK that I have in my stash. And of course the Weekender. I just made a really short list this time. Last year I had a huge long list and I had a bunch of patterns in mind at the beginning of, at the top of 2022 that I never used. And I actually own those patterns. So I may make those, but I just figured it was time to let it go on the list. Um, and then what I did next was I um, made a list of yarn without projects that I want to keep in mind um, for some potential projects. And it's all old stash. Um, I don't have any of my hand spun here because, of course, I'm always looking for something to make out of my hand spun. Um, but some, some, um, there, it's funny, they're all blue. They're all blue tones. Um, and I have a clip in here that I filmed before of me talking about them. So as I'm telling you about them, I'll put the clip in of showing the yarn. Um, but, yeah, I thought I would just show you. It's a lot of blue because I bought a lot of blue a few years back and just didn't stop. So... This is a, it's a swatch actually with some spin cycle in there, but the yarn is by, it's the last one on the list, Le Petite, Le Petite Lamb's Wool in a nice pretty blue. It's fingering weight. Oh my gosh, I have so much blue here. This is the one that's the first on the list. It's this Boondoggle Bunny yarn. It is so super soft. It's deep dark navy. It's got a little bit of Angora in it. It's gorgeous. I really want to do something with it. The problem is it's not a big quantity. It needs to be color work because I think I only have 800 yards of it. And I bought this at Rhinebeck in 2021. Really want to do something with it. So that is on my list. I just have, I probably end up will end up doing a color work sweater because 800 yards is probably enough to make for the main color of the color work. I have this beautiful Tacoma Twist from Wing and a Prayer. I've had it for a few years. I think I bought it in 2020. It's a really interesting blend. It's wool and mohair. It's classified as a sport, but when I put it into the Ravelry queue, it came up as a worsted weight. This could be the main color for the Foss, what is it, Fosfian? That could be a pretty main color. I would just have to figure out what the other colors would be because it is a pretty subdued color for me. I'd want to maybe pop, I wonder if black and white would look good. Last, which would also be a really pretty, this yarn I bought, I know I bought it in 2020, early on in the pandemic. Um, it is by Jill Draper. So these are all farm yarns. I basically put all my farm yarns on this list. Really pretty. It's Ansel. It is a super fine merino, um, not super wash. It's, got, it's a beautiful tonal blue, like indigo blue. It's gorgeous. I don't know why I haven't come up with a project for it, but I haven't. Yeah. So those are what are on this list, as well as the two Advents I just received. There's a Kiami Advent and the Grinui Advent. Um, just going to be thinking about those, letting those sort of hang around in the back of my mind. And then I also have um, a Helix Kumo combo from La Bien Aime. It's a her Flaceweight Zach yak blend of some sort and then this is the alpaca lace that she has surrey out lace it's a pink purple color i have a few ideas for this i actually had it on my old list too i just never cast it on i may end up just doing a daily pullover um in that i that was my last that my last idea that resonated. I have the yarn caked and everything. I don't know why I don't just cast it on. It's just one of those things, I suppose. Um, but that is one carryover from the previous year. So 
that is where I'm at with my project journal. I do use this. I mostly use Ravelry, but I do use this. There's something that's a little bit satisfying about clicking things off and being able to look. Um, it's a different way to just double check what I'm adding up. And um, like I do have another project that I haven't added to that list, but I will. Um, that just came up in conversation with one of my sons. One of my sons has requested a throw. I love making throws because they're bulky knits and they usually go really fast. Um, so I want to make him a throw. I saw on Jonathan Day's knitting channel, um, he had purchased one of these little handy dandy things that um, is, this is basically an iCord knitter and I made a sample <laughs> of iCord using some, um, scraps that I had. This is actually the squid game that I used in one of my lace and fades. I love how it stripes in the I-cord um, structure. And then the idea is to use it as yarn. So I just made a loop to kind of, I was going to do a little swatch, but I think this could make a really cool blanket. Um, not that yarn per se, but maybe, you know, if I'm, if I'm willing to spend the time to sit here and make I-cord, which, you know, maybe, maybe I could do that. My problem right now is that I don't have a square edged table I could put this on um, and sit there and, you know, crank. Uh, so I end up, I, to make this, I held it, held it in my hand and it worked fine. Uh, it's a little fiddly to get started, um, but I was able to like hold the yarn and create some tension here. Um, here, I'll show you a picture. This is what I, I brought the, bought the one. There's a bunch of them on the market. I bought Prims because it's a company I trust. And you can see how, how it works there. Um, but my thought was maybe I take a sweater's quantity of some superwash and make a bunch of I-cord. And I looked at a pattern that is by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern. It's a blanket pattern. Um, and it's made out of super bulky yarn, like probably what's bulky, what would be probably even more bulky than what this is. Um, what this has become, I think. But, you know, this could be really cool in a loose, like, one-by-one one rib knit, you know? Anyway, I looked at that pattern because I was curious about yardage, and the yardage that that pattern called for is 275 yards of super bulky weight. Um, and I think if I have, like, 1,200 yards of yarn, I should be able to get... Uh, 500 yards like I'm or maybe maybe it's less because you're making what for oh maybe it's half as much so if I have 1200 yards I might get 300 yards <laughs> so that would be pretty close to what the it would be over which would be great because that blanket's very narrow it's pretty but it's very narrow I don't really think it's a throw it would be good for one person I think my son would prefer something that would he'd be able to share um so yeah, I'm thinking about that. I have I pulled out a sweater's quantity of um, some magpie yarn that I got last year with my. This was one of the adjuncts that I got in 2021. It's really pretty. Some superwash base. Uh, it's a MCN merino cashmere nylon, 400 yards. I think I have another 50 gram skein, so I may end up with, if that, that would be 1400 yards, so I may end up with, divided by three to four, yeah, I might end up with like 400 yards, which might be, might be enough, um, you can always just knit on really huge needles, I guess, that would be the other way. But I first need to slog through making the eye cord, so it's something I'm considering, I might, I might just hold three strands together <laughs> because that would also get me 400 yards um, and and make that make it that way um, but yeah I really really want to use up some stash I want to try to use all one color and not make it multicolored um, because I think that's just more sophisticated looking my alternative would be to use some hand spun maybe make some new hand spun I could use that 32 ounce thing of fiber that I have um yeah I don't know I'm gonna figure it out um oh the uh 
the Moondrake I did have on my list, my Christmas list, so I got some of it. I had to pay for some of it, but some of it was paid for, um, which was great because this, again, this is pretty expensive yarn. I think it's like $40 a skein. It's pretty high. Um, and I ended up with eight skeins, I think, because of the contrast colors. Um, but with the contrast colors, I'll uh, divide them in half and then I'll hold two strands together. So that'll work. You should see me back here um, in a couple weeks. Maybe I, the episodes might be spaced out a little bit more than they usually are because of my situation with having to move and needing to dedicate a lot of time to um, efforts of, uh, you know, getting a mortgage and all of that, which it's, it's not so bad. It's not as bad. Like I know some folks in the UK really have talked about how awful it is, how long it takes. It's not so bad here. Um, my real estate agent told me to expect about a 45 to 60 day turn time once we do contracts. So that's pretty good. I could have a contract by the end of January and that would mean I would move by the end of March, which would be ideal. So we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Um, but just know that if I'm not here, it's because, not because I don't want to be here, but because I am swamped with uh, house buying stuff, whatever that means. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you're well. Happy New Year. Thank you for being here. Um, please like, subscribe, comment below, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.